go, something like that. Something like that. Ah, let's see. That might work. Alright. Oh, it's too high. Looks silly. Yeah, we'll go with something like that. Uh, like that. Okay, need a couple more horses. There is some that sort of runs by that all is well. I'll go grab maybe a couple more horses here. They're all the back, don't know why. I'll be back.
horses everywhere. That's it for now. A decent portion of them. Rue and Tana are going to stay in the forest. And Ali, he's a little much, so I'm going to leave him. Little much as in he kind of gets pretty darn excited. We're going to leave him as is for now. Let's see. Oh, 20 people. That's fantastic. Hello, everybody. Hello, Carla. Long time no see indeed. How's the knots obsessions coming along? Rick's here. Hello, Rick from Florida. And uh, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Chopping some garden veggies for a supper salad. That's good. We were just at the store the other day. Bought, bought some some cherry tomatoes on the vine. <clears throat> they buy them and they're in a they're in a package. And uh, speaking of salad, you know. And um, so we love them. They're just so tasty. And and they're I think they're probably about. 15 tomatoes on this little piece of vine. It's like four dollars. It's ridiculous expensive and uh, But they're so tasty and so Haley says she goes these taste a little different when they're on the vines Yeah, they've got sort of that off the vine Outside flavor and then the inside sort of tastes like tomato I don't know if any of you guys will relate to that But there is that particular flavor about them and I said I used to grow these things enough So I mean if you have something like four or five bushes it's more than plenty <clears throat> to feed, you know, a few people throughout the summer. And uh, I said, I used to just practically throw these things away. I had so many. Anyways, so. Tasty. Love garden fresh veggies. Oh, David's here. Hello, David. Doing some Uber driving, eh, Carla? I know a lot of, I know a few people that do that. Not a lot, but a few. Joyce is here. Hello, Joyce. So, yeah, horses are out. Um, it's pretty quiet. It's sort of mid afternoon here. So, first things first is a bunch of co grooming. Gracie's done her running early, early, early on. And, uh, Let's see, yeah, so I've left Rue and Tana in <clears throat> just because Tana's low horse and I have a little chitty chat to do about that. And then if, if I put her in, she'll just kind of go to the corner and try to get to Rue if I put Rue in. And while it is interesting and, and the horses sort themselves out, I think today we'll leave them as is. And of course, Allie, he's only got, I think, another week here. It's not really worth trying to... I mean, he's been out with Lena... Uh, he's obviously been out with Luke, he's been out with Roni, he's been out with Rue. Uh, him and Lena didn't really do anything. Look at Luke, eh? He's a busy guy. Pushing nanners around here. She says, okay. Gracie's third wheel. So that's good. Anyhow, so, um, about Tana. So training's coming along well. I know I haven't done a lot of update videos, but... There's a side of me that just says, well, it's sort of kind of just, you know, the the basic stuff I've talked about. Wow, look at that. She really snuggled up to him. I think you guys will be able to see this a little. I'll see if I can't zoom in a bit. These two are fascinating. I really find them interesting a lot. I think Ohana's in heat a little bit. We'll see what happens here. <clears throat> uh, anyways, training's coming along well, but a lot of the stuff I'm doing is really just a lot of quiet work and I know that it's not that interesting um, it's tedious <clears throat> and full of a lot of patience might might not be that interesting for for quite a few but I don't know I've got one video that's coming out soon <clears throat> on the topic well, moving around switching partners Lena says Luke Get on the job. Okay. Hi, really? <clears throat> really stealing the show for now. Ronnie's going over to Gracie. That's unusual. So, yes. Oh. What's that? 
So uh, Tana, Tana's doing, she's doing pretty good, <clears throat> doing a bunch of uh, riding, primarily some groundwork. She needs more practice, um, plastic things, tarps and bags and things that make weird noises and wave around and ropes, um, do a lot of rope stuff with her. She's quite nervous about it. And so an exercise that I like to do um, is to ride <clears throat> with other horses that are free at liberty. So I'll ride one, but the others will be at liberty. They'll be free to do what they want here in the arena. I find that useful because there's going to be times um, when that's going to it's going to be the case. You're going to be around, be riding your horse around other horses, <clears throat> and you have to be able to control your horse. Whoa, Alina just told me manners where to go. That's unusual. Uh-oh. Some movement. These two right in front of us are kind of in the way. The adorable couple. Appaloosa and the quarter horse. Manners is moving in. Bam! Butt punch for Luke. So, um... Anyways, when I was riding her around, she's she's kind of low horse, so the other horses want to push her around. But I tried to make it so that, you know, the horse I'm riding is the high horse. Obviously, when I walk in there, nobody pushes me around. Nobody should push any human around. So if a human is, <laughs> if a human is riding a horse, then that horse should not be hassled. And so you're kind of training the horse that you're on, and you're training the horses that are around. And I find that... Yeah, useful. A useful skill. So the problem is, though, sometimes you got to deter other horses, and to do that, you got to swing a rope around or be noisy or something or whatever. And poor Tana, she can't handle much of swinging ropes and and bags and stuff like that. So it's a little bit hard to deter any horses that want to come in and bite or kick or something silly. So that's been a lot of practice. She's been good. Ali's doing great. His his destiny is trail riding in his future <clears throat> to be quiet. So we've been working on a lot of that quiet, slow down, patience stuff. Brenda says, I have cherry tomatoes and the best tomatoes in the south. <laughs> Cherokee tomatoes. Yum. Second crop of carrots. are not ready to pull yet. Think of the four-legged children when I do pull them. Carla says, I've loved watching the quiet stuff. Interesting to me. Cool, Carla. Well, I definitely I definitely have some quiet stuff for sure. And to me it's it's you know it's um it's the basics, you know, stop, go, turn, back up. <clears throat> with any luck you get some side passing going. You can work with just your body, work with the reins, but it's all quiet work. You're not kicking them around or doing too much. Um, Ali's an interesting sort. He's he's pretty patient for the most part, but he's six, so he's got a little bit of you know fidgetiness in him. He's fidgety. And when he fidgets around, uh, you have to talk to him. Say, well, don't fidget. Just hang out with me. Be cool. So it takes time. It takes a lot of practice and time. Got to keep their mind busy, you know, and their body a little bit. Pops here. Hello, pop. Gail Ann's here from Southern Nevada. Is it hot there? It's kind of warm here. We've got a nice day. Bonnie's here. Hello, Bonnie. Glad you have the arena where the horses can socialize. So very important in a horse's life. It is. I agree. This guy's got to walk around. They've got to work things out. Got to be a little bit of stress. Got to be a little bit of relaxation. Luke is very busy today. Oh, he almost got booted. And then he turned around and gave a kick. The girls are in the way. Luke says, I'm coming. But she's put a wheelbarrow, or a wheelbarrow, just a barrel in the way. We'll see how it goes. I think Ruli's owners are coming out soon, so she might depart from this live stream soon. We shall see. But yeah, it's been busy. Lessons. Um, training, 
hot, says Galen. Yeah, I thought so. I thought you guys were getting hot weather. Over 100. That's undesirable. <clears throat> we had some hot weather for a couple weeks there for sure. I mean, it's very dry right now. It's super duper dry. You can see sort of, I don't know if you can see in the air, but it's a little foggy. Not foggy, sort of dusty. Just from what the horses are doing so far. If they get cruising around, it'll get really dusty. So, what's Gracie looking at? Gracie's been staring up at the arena, or up at the driveway. I don't know, nobody here yet. Rick says it's a dry heat. Texas is 96. Ugh. We have a heat index of 107 with 70 to 80% humidity. That's in Florida, right? Man, that's a lot of humidity. We had humidity. It doesn't get nearly that bad here, but last week I think it was. It wasn't that warm. And I'd come out in the morning to work and, you know, clean up, do, do stuff. And I it wasn't it really wasn't that hot but the humidity was crazy i mean it might as well have been raining four showers a day yeah i bet yeah it was hot i call it like a, a three shirt day or something you know when you're out and about and you're working like i better change my shirt it's too hot gracie's on yoga duty there's nothing over there though i've gone through there and tried to kill off a bunch of the weeds with vinegar I don't know if I've ever said that before, but vinegar is a, like strong vinegar. The 10% stuff is super good for killing off weeds. So I put that down there. Joyce says it's a perfect day. Sunny, dry, and in the 80s. Pop's going to Florida soon. That's cool. I don't know what it is here. 20, it's probably about 25 degrees Celsius, whatever that is. I'm not a Fahrenheit dude. I, I can't convert because I don't really think about it much. Oh, Carla's out. Good night, Carla. See you next time. So, training. Tana, yeah, she's been doing quite well for that. <clears throat> and Allie's been very busy out back. Been working in the back, the backyard. The, uh, behind the arenas. In the forest where I've got some trails back there. I've been working with quite a bit. These guys are a little bit quiet. It's kind of nice. Don't get me wrong, but look at Gracie on her knees. Like, just gotta get those weeds. That's what Gracie was looking at. Ruby's owners are here, so <clears throat> we'll see if she heads on in or not. Over to the back arena. Let's see. Rick says, "Oh, Brenda's got to go." Bye, Brenda. Pop had to watch a funeral the other day. That sucks. Um, <clears throat> it's gonna be sad to see Peggy leave. Says Rick. It's true. Me too. She is. A nice, a nice splash around here of color and good horse and all kinds of things. She's neat. It's going to be a little weird. We're going to have, I think, three horses leaving all in this month. Weird. It's really strange. <clears throat> Piggy's going, right? And then Allie was only here. He's only here for, well, scheduled for, the, for a month. Whoa, look at that. When he's telling Luke to take off. That's unusual. That is unusual. Let's see if we can zoom in and see what's going on here. 
<laughs> yeah, and then um, Tana will be gone at the end of the month, too. She's scheduled to leave at the end of this month. Uh, by the schedule. <laughs> That's, that, was, that was always going to be the case. But yeah, three at once is a big jump. But we'll see what happens. There's a possibility of a couple... Um, we'll see what we'll see what I'll find out tomorrow. <clears throat> actually, more training. Someone is going down. Luke says, "Perfect opportunity. Really, come here for some scritchy scratchings." She says, "What? Are you sure?" Nope. She says, "No, I'm good." Pop says, "I hope Lena doesn't leave." Nah, Lena's blind. Lena's blind. Gonna happen, Roni. Go get him. Bite him in the ear. He sends him on his way with a little nibble. Luke does not even care. There's a no caresies horse right there. <laughs> there are girls over there. I'm good. He is interesting, though. I do find that he's quite sensitive to other horses. Seeing if they need uh, need some screechy scratches or some massages or something. Hello, April. How are you today? So it's pretty quiet. <clears throat> I don't know if there's really going to be much to, to watch for these guys. This might be one of them quieter ones. Pops on his couch. That's good. Nice to take a break. Sit around. Take it easy. Hello, Julia. It's great to have people say hello. I can say hello. I'm doing quite well, actually. Quite well. It has been a busy uh, few days. Evolving. Get random random calls like, hey, can, can we come visit or have a lesson? or sure yeah i guess so um and then uh training the usual stuff trimming lots of trimming this trimming week i don't know how i i'm uh oh luke's getting luke's getting in trouble uh i don't know i'm quite curious to, to hear how other people might do it if you have more than one horse obviously there's well, there's 10 here at the moment, but one of them, I don't manage their feet. Everybody else, I got nine horses to manage their feet on. <clears throat> and I try to do them all. Oh, geez, Roo Lee. You see that? Roni wasn't even doing anything. He was like sniffing the ground. Really did a drive-by and yelled at him. Weird. So weird. Anyway. Um... Look at him, he's just he's just sniffing the ground doing doing the, the horse thing, you know, where they stick their nose in the air and show their teeth, the flame, Fleming re response or something. <clears throat> Anyhow, so yeah, I'm curious. I got nine that I take care of at the moment here, and I try to put them on the same week. Um, I don't do them all in one day because it is a lot of work, especially in the summertime. Let's uh, just say I'm glad I got a pool, but you know, get out trim three trim four maybe five in a day so usually over the course of <clears throat> maybe two to three days at most i'll get them all trimmed up well, Ruby's on yoga duty here she goes down to the knees and up not bad not bad um you know the other the other thought process is to just do one a day and then you know, you wait a week or two and then get the next ones, you know, do it again, you know, one a day. So the course of nine days, the first horse is already nine days in, a little over a week in. So wait a couple of weeks, puts them on that three-week schedule. I can't believe the weeds are so tasty that horses would do that. Those things are dying. I have vinegared them up. Maybe they like the vinegar. Mm. 
<laughs> get it really <laughs> exactly uh very few weeds over there but just enough nope not worth it says i'm out this is not enough food speaking of food they've all got food so i don't see why it's really such a big deal Eat a couple of weeds with that much effort anyhow so trimming so i'm really curious if if other places just do a big batch trim, keep everybody on the same kind of schedule, or if they stagger them. <clears throat> Sometimes you got to meet their needs, too. Sometimes they're not on a three- or four-week schedule. They might be on a one- to two-week schedule. Or... Yeah. You keep track of that stuff. That's the other thing. You keep track of it. You just keep track of a, of a cycle. Keep track of each horse. Yeah, I'm kind of curious as to what others do. So I just don't think there's much going on here, folks. Rick says, what do you do with manure? We compost it here. It uh, feeds the forest. Rebecca's here. Hello, Rebecca. From Vegas. Um, it's just not that... Oh, Lena's moving. She's uh, doing something. Moving Luke. And back to grooming. Socialization, exercise, you know, just doing stuff. I am good, Rebecca. I hope you're doing well there, too. Pretty quiet. Okay, hang on. I'll be back in a second. Just going to check on Ruli's owner.
Boy, these guys are busy out here, aren't they? I'm back. Okay, who's here? Oh my goodness, we got all kinds of... All kinds of... Jeez. Hang on, let me get back to you. Okay, we got. I got back to Rick and Rebecca. So, let's move the camera smidge. Let me get a chair. Guys are blowing the comments out of the water here. Okay. Well, Luke's moving her. She's going back. Nope. Get her, buddy. You lost her. Oh, Loney's moving in. He's like, get away. He swishes his tail. He is not. Oh, Ruby's got to go. She's got to go anyway. She'll be out soon to go play with her owner. Oh, Roni, what are you going to do with yourself? He blocks her. Stop there. Don't go. Uh oh, Gracie's yelling. See how dusty it gets so quickly? It's not the camera, it's not a dirty lens or nothing. All right. Um, Joyce says, amazing how much Gracie has calmed down. Well, if you saw her when I first put her in, but it's true, she's better overall. Um, yep. Oh, David's recommending a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithms. It's true. Thanks, Rick. Um, yeah, David and I have had a lot of conversations about uh, technology. Uh, it's been quite interesting. We've discussed, you know, how it all works. But yeah, thumbs up's always nice. Leona's here. Hello, Leona. Uh, LM Otterson's here. Surprised to catch a second last stream. I usually miss most last streams because people do them when I'm working. Yeah. I do them whenever I kind of get an opportunity. Chuck our horses out, and uh, and then uh, just chuck it as long as I got enough battery in my camera, then I'll go. Zoom out just a smidge. Encore Wizard is here. I always like a good wizard in the crew. When is here? Hello, Gwen. Joyce is in southern New England, Connecticut. Leona is near Vancouver. Leona, you're local? I don't know if I knew that. Did I know that? 
Look, everybody's watching. Ruli's owner, she's cruising along with a bucket. You know what that means? Cleaning supplies. <laughs> it's only funny to me, maybe. That's the problem with the live stream is I have to listen to myself laugh. <laughs> All right. Leona, I did not know you were near Vancouver. That's cool. Just pop by sometime. Wizard says there's a lot of corn. I like corn. Otterson says lakes and wineries. Where are you located? Ah. New York. Okay, Rick's got a good question. Love questions. Thanks for questions. Um, I have a question for everyone. The hay bag setup that is used here, on average, about how many average bales a month per head? Well, Rick, the problem with your question is, um, depending on where you get your hay from, a bale will weigh different. So what we, need really, what we really need to work out is how many tons of hay or pounds of hay per head per month and on a very super general scale um, we're looking at um, I think about half a ton per horse per month is that right that's not right thousand pounds well they say that every horse should have 25 pounds per day so if you just did that, you'd have, yeah, I guess it's about half, well, close to half a ton per head per month. So, yeah, it's a lot. You should take both of them. I know, right? <laughs> take them. Oh, there's a third. You get three. Yeah. Horses are too friendly here. Too friendly. Go away. Anyhow, yeah, it's quite a lot of hay. You go through quite a bit of hay. Um, so, yeah, with 10 horses, I guess it's close to 5 tons. For some reason, that does not seem right. Yeah, I gotta do some math or something in my head. Hang on a second. It's 2,000 pounds too tight. I guess I better scroll all the way to the bottom of the. 200 bales for seven head. But Missy, how much do your bales weigh? I gotta scroll up in a little while. Oh, Leona's in Richmond. Cool, yeah, come on by. Um, let's see. Missy, how much do your. How much do your. Bales weigh. 200 bales for seven head. That should last an, a month and a half. So you're saying that 500 bales would last you a month. And each way, so 25, 2600. Yeah, if you did 500 bales, or sorry, what? My brain is failing. 200 bales for 700 for one and a half months. So maybe you'd go through 150 a month. Have I got that right? Maybe it's a little off for that. 500. Well, here's the deal. Uh, our horses here go through at least 30 pounds each, 30 to 40 pounds per day. So every one of the bales is 120 pounds, roundabouts, 110 to 120 pounds. So somebody do the math. Well, 
the clan. Only 13 centigrade here in Scotland. Came across some guinea fowl for the first time while out on a trail ride. Man, do they make a strange racket when disturbed. Well, we don't have any of those here, but I can imagine they do. And 13 is kind of chilly. That sucks. I'm not looking forward to that. I like being out of my shorts and t-shirt. And hello, the clan. Ida's here. Hi, Ida. Aileen's here. Hello, Aileen. Do you know what's actually in the weeds that attracts them? No. I don't know. Food? The food value? It's green. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, Eva's here. Hello, Eva. I haven't seen you in a while. Poor Roni. Really's taking a bite from the crab apple tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I made it all back up, all the way up to Rick's question about hay usage. It's a lot. Um, ten, ten head here. Yeah, I think I've burned through a lot of hay. When I got that hay supply in, I have been burning through probably, probably two bales a day almost. Yeah. So 240 a day, 240 pounds a day, roundabouts. 220, 240. Per day um, so it adds up so around here each horse if we did some math I think if my math is correct each horse is a couple hundred bucks for sure in hay more than that I think it's more than that everybody's at the back because really's out back it is a quiet day. Okay, let's get on. Yeah, Leona's over in Richmond. That's not far. That's cool. How far is it? 45 minutes, maybe? Scotland's a cool place. Uh, and the clan's from Scotland. That's, that's neat. Horse riding out there. That's cool. 13 degrees is cold though, that's for sure. I mean chilly, not cold. As he says, per head they get roughly a bale or more a day in the summer plus grain. Yeah. 30 pounds per day, 30 days, 900 pounds per month for a horse. Yeah, it's close to half a ton. Yep, so I was right. <laughs> My initial thought was right. Half a ton of hay. So yeah, I guess in one month I'd go through five tons, which is a lot. That's most of the load that I got. I better think about that. Because hmm. I was thinking I was going through hay awfully fast. Ten bales per month per horse. Half baked. <laughs> David says, I was up in the loft a while ago and then again a few days later. Surprised how many bales of hay had gone through in just those few days. Yeah, it's it's nuts. It's uh, It feels like it's really quick this time. I haven't had 10 horses in here for a little bit. Um, yeah, eight, nine. Uh, so. Wizard says, is there a standard moisture content controlled for hay bales or is moisture control in bales on the consumer? Just curious. The hay bales show up dry, <laughs> hopefully. And um, <laughs> um, so she just got really back there. It was funny. Um, there's nothing that I do for moisture control other than keep it in a very dry location, which is the hayloft. Um, yeah, I think, I don't think I've heard of any places other than maybe possibly having fans. If you've got enough hay and it's moist, it'll heat up, it'll get warm, it'll get sometimes hot. I've heard some places, 
um, get fires. Because the hay gets too hot. Uh, I've never really experienced that. I mean, it's hot in the hayloft, or it's w quite warm in the hayloft. It's not hot. It's warm in the hayloft because the sun beats down on it. But in the wintertime, it isn't, there's no real temperature change here. So moisture should be non-existent, really. Very, very low in hay. Otherwise, it'll rot. So, um, you know, it's, it's relying on a good supplier who relies on good hay growers that bail their hair at the right time they don't bail it when it rains they don't bail it before it's dry you know so i think it's yeah the stuff i have now is super dry very very dry so it lasts forever I and mean, you can just keep it up there for a long time no moisture so i guess it's, it's on the owner it's on the consumer the person who buys it to make sure that the hay stays in a very dry dry location um, and if not, if you keep it in a place that's open to a big draft or any moisture can kind of get in, <laughs> all of them watching, where's Ruli going? He's going for a trail ride. We've got trails on the property. Um, you know, hay will rot. Hay will get, um, the outside edge will rot. And what will happen is they'll get mildew. And it'll just rot. Um, so, not what you want. Keep it dry. Keep it in a closed space with some small movement of air. No access to the outside, obviously. Uh, otherwise, moisture can get in, and it'll 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 make the outside mildewy. Uh, best way to put it. So, a closed hay loft is best. If I've missed anybody to say hello, please tell me. <clears throat> so, uh, it's a good question though. Is there standard moisture content control? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, they come dry, so hopefully you don't have to do anything. Just keep them in a good place that is out of the elements and closed off from the elements. The dropped hay gets thrown out to the field for grazing. Cool. David's off for a walk. Later, buddy. Yeah, the supplier, it's it's really up to the supplier, and then it's up to the to have a good grower or a good hay grower uh, for the suppliers that we rely on. Um, it is possible to go straight out to a field and go get hay. A lot of in fact, there's a lot of local fields around here that will put a post up on Facebook or something saying we're baling hay. Uh, we don't want to bring it in, so you can come drive onto the field and pick it up in your truck. It's five bucks a bale. Now, local bales are somewhere between 40 and 60 pounds. So it's definitely cheaper than buying large, large bales like I do. Um, but that quality of the hay is different fine but it's usually lower quality less less nutrition so you kind of have to feed more of it to get what you want so yeah and there's plenty especially for those places if you're just driving in the field and stuff like that then you're liable to get a lot of you know there might be a bunch of weeds um, you know and because it's so cheap, you don't have the opportunity to complain. You can't complain. It's like paid next to nothing for it. Yeah. So sort of how it works around here. Everybody's in the back. This is probably yeah, not that interesting. Just co grooming. Luke and Lena are hanging out. Manners is trying to eat grass over the top of the fence. Peggy's doing nothing. Gracie's just waiting for Rudy to come back. She's looking out into the forest. And Roni's probably feeling a little lost himself too.
And she says five fifty for delivery. Gosh, that's cheap. Oh, he is moving, smiling. Zoop. No, zoom in. I don't know if that zoomed in. No. The clan says my horse has started to overreach at walk. I guess it's one of those depends questions. Thanks, Mark. Well, Mark. Um. Oh, somebody's yelling. I think it was Lena. Nanners is moving her. She says, get moving. Everybody's coming to the top, maybe. No, maybe not. Okay, uh, overreaching. Um, usually it's one of two reasons. And if you think about how the physics works for horses walking, this will make sense, particular explanation. I don't think we I don't think anybody can see Ruby anymore, so they're 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 pretty sure she's dead. It's a dead horse out there. We've lost her. She's gone off alone. She's gone senile. <laughs> Poor Ruby. She's uh doing great. Nobody's calling out. Anyhow, so overreaching. Um so if it, is it this is oh at a walk okay so i was going to ask you is it a walk trot or canter not a walk move it roni look at him what a goof <laughs> nanners is moving in stay away from my lena and he's like yeah but i lost my old lady oh here they come Oh, maybe not. <laughs> oh, and he's losing it. He's like, what do I do? Okay, cool. Well, we've got some subjects up front. So, um, I don't know why Roni even bothers trying. Overreaching is one of two things. Uh, one, Let's look at the front feet first. Actually, I, I'd say 90% of the times is one of two things. So overreach, actually, if anybody doesn't know what overreaching is, let's explain that really quickly. Overreaching is where the back feet hit the front feet or can hit the front feet because they reach under and in towards the front to or appear to reach under and in too far. And the reason they appear to overreach and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong with your horse, if it's what it is or isn't, um, is because the front feet get hit by ba by the back feet. Is, am I am I getting it? Let me know. I will pause. Of course, Luke's chasing off Nanners. Says get going, get some exercise. Gracie still gets moved by Lena, but Le Gracie was moving Luke earlier. That was interesting. We better zoom in a bit. Okay, that's it exactly. All right. <clears throat> so that's the general term for, or the general, the observation we can make uh, from the statement of a horse overreaching is that their back feet hit their front feet. So the thought process is the back feet are overreaching. Now, it may or may not be that the back feet are reaching under too far. So here's, here's the theory. And without seeing your horse, I wouldn't be able to say. So I'd only say the answer, it depends, is because... I, I can't, I don't see it, but this is what I would look for if I heard that and somebody said, come take a look at the horse, this is the first thing I'd look for. I'd look at the front feet first. And the reason I'd look at the front feet first is because I'd want to make sure that that front leg can leave the ground on time. Now, if you're wondering, what on earth are you talking about? then 
I would consider sort of the thought of imagine putting on clown shoes. You know those big, huge shoes where you got this massive shoe on and it's got a big long toe kind of thing. And if you were to walk around, or even just flippers, you know, like when you go swimming and you put on flippers, when you walk around on those, do your feet leave the ground at the right time or do they leave late? So, if we think about the physics of it, if the front feet toes are longer than the skeletal structure allows for, for a timely um, breakover, and breakover is where the toe, uh-oh, whoa, look at that. Oh, you guys can't see it, sorry, there you go. Where the toe um, does what's called breakover, which means it, it's just about to leave the ground. So the, the foot is rolling forward and the toe breaks forward and the pastern breaks forward and it does what's called a breakover. <clears throat> so if the toe is at the right spot for the skeletal structure, the front foot will leave the ground in a timely manner. Um, but if not, and just like if we wear our clippers or our clown shoes or something, then there's a very high chance um, that the front feet are leaving late. So, if that toe is long and the front foot is leaving late, um, and the back foot comes in to land normally, in normal timing, then it's going to appear that the back foot is overreaching because it's hitting the front foot because the front foot can't leave the ground in time. That's the first thing. The second thing to think about, and it might be one of these or both of these problems. The second thing to think about is a low back heel. So if we think about I think the girls would pick up on this maybe a little bit better than the boys in this stream. But if you think about if you're wearing high heels and you walk along, does your heel hit the ground sooner or later if you're wearing them? And I would imagine you take shorter steps in high heels and you would take a longer step in running shoes. Okay, physics, just basic physics. The heel being longer because of the heel will hit the ground sooner. So a horse that has very short heels in the back will land later than those with either a proper or long heel. So a shorter heel on the back can also cause an overreach. If you were to combine that with a long toe on the front where the front feet can't leave on time, you get excessive overreach and uh, you just get, yeah, heel bulbs that are uh, clipped. We get called clipped heel bulbs. So people wear, will put on their horses bell boots, and they'll they'll use them to protect the heel bulbs, and they'll do it all the time because they think it's normal, but it isn't. Actually, just most of the time, it's a hoof problem, and you can fix it by trimming correctly. The other issues are stiffness and soreness, um, alignment problems that a chiropractic massage person would, would maybe help out with. Um, but most of the time it's hoof issues. And uh, yeah, it's hard on the horse, so you'll want to get it figured out as soon as you can. I do, I've done a few videos, and in them, when I trim the horses, I try to talk about doing. I try to do a tracking test on my horses before and after a trim. And a tracking test is generally taking a horse for a very consistent walk on an area that I can track their hoof prints. So usually I'll use the arena and I'll rake out a spot, make it flat and make it smooth. And I'll walk the horse along there and I'll be able to track their hoof steps where they land in this tracking nest <clears throat> and then trim them and then try again and almost always they will 
um, if they weren't tracking well and a horse is tracking well when their back feet land where their front feet leave leaves so an overreaching horse their back feet will land forward of where their front foot leaves and an underreaching horse as they call it um, their back feet will land behind where the front foot leaves. So you want them to land in the same spot. It should look like two footsteps kind of thing up for, for a horse. Anyways, hopefully that helps. Sorry, I only got like five hours sleep last night. <laughs> Randomly sleepy. Overreaching is a big deal because you can clip heel, ball, heel bulbs and it really hurts. You can also clip off horseshoes. We didn't even talk about if they're shod or not. Mark, you got your horse shod? Or the one you're talking about? Hey, Laura's here. Friend of mine. You're here early? I don't even know what time it is. Forget it. I'm on the interweb telling people all kinds of stuff that I think I know. <laughs> I said it'd be around six. Is it six? six. Jeez, time flies. I guess I should have looked at the sun a little bit. <laughs> Got the horses out. People are asking all kinds of good questions. Uh, yeah, Ruli's owner is back there. She's doing some trail riding. Pretty cool, right? And Gracie. Gracie, right? That's right. Gonna get some attention. <laughs> Anyways, Mark, let me know if that's what it is. If it's not that, uh, then uh, he gets re regular physio as being a tall 17-year-old. Yes, he gets shod due on Friday, so I'll check out your segregation things. Yeah, sometimes being shod, uh, so there's a, a third part of that. Um, shod on all four or just the fronts? Penny, hello, Penny. No, it's not. Uh, Rue's in the forest with Tana. Ruli's owner is back there, riding around. Anyhow, so um, if when they're shod, all four, okay. Sometimes <clears throat> the shoe can be heavy enough to cause an overreach as the hoof comes forward and the inertia of the shoe actually brings the hoof forward. But I would definitely take a look at the fronts. And this is a hard one because you might not, it may not be obvious. And anyways, yeah, uh, low back heels, long front toes. Those two are major contributors uh, being shod can cause inertia issues, meaning that as the foot comes forward, it travels a little bit too far because it's heavy. Not a lot of heavy, but a little bit, enough. I mean, go ahead and put, you know, a few pounds of lead in your shoe, you know, or even even on your, uh, on your leg, you know, you get those weights and they just walk around kind of lazy like, and I bet your leg will travel a little different. It'll be interesting. You should try it. So it's physics. It's, it's always physics that we can kind of go back to and consider how it can affect the stride of a horse um, based on those things. So. Anyways, let me know how it goes. Hopefully it goes well. Anyway. Okay, it looks like I've got to get going. <laughs> My time is up. Thank you everybody for uh, coming on in. Great questions. Thanks for the questions. Appreciate those. I love sharing um, any knowledge that I think I know. So we, if that is it, unless there's something more, I'll give you guys another minute. Got any questions? Answer. Ask them now. Crazy's eating weeds. If not, it's cool. I'll be back, back hopefully tomorrow. Do some more live streaming. Play with horses. Training and oh, Catherine's here. Hello, Catherine. 
You're very welcome. You're welcome, Rick. Welcome, L.M. Otterson. Still reminds me of that show. What is that show called? Wizard said, thanks, you're welcome. Joyce, good night. Good night, everybody. Yeah, it's, uh, it's time to get some food. And um, put some horses away soon, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's a good day. Oh, get moving very soon. Okay, everybody. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for coming in. It's been great. Good night, April. Good night, Ida.